Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm talking about how you upgrade from Velostrone version 111 which is the current customer release to the very soon to be released version 112. So what I'm showing here on my screen at the moment is the Velostrone website and if you've logged in so if you click the login button which I think is normally up here you can see I have logged in it's got Ashley Davis up here when you log in it takes you straight to my licenses and then you have the download links for the different versions of Velocidrone and the version 112 version will be listed here when we publish it and make it live currently it's showing 111 because 111 is the current active release but once we put 112 live it will appear here you come here and then you've got windows at the top see the windows icon OSX in the middle OSX and the penguin is Linux so you download whichever version is for your machine type I won't do that now because this is version 111 so once you download these what you'll get is a zip file and it'll be one of these three files so it'll either be production launcher for Linux production launcher for OS X or production launcher for Windows and it is a compressed zip file so the first thing you need to do is you need to move that zip file to a folder on its own so I've already done that and that's what this over here is so we come over here and you can see I've created a, a folder here called video demo and I've just put the production launcher windows.zip inside of it now the important thing about the folder that you put this into is that it must be read write accessible because the sim does need to read from this particular directory when you run it if you put this into somewhere like Windows program files or a place which is read only access then the sim just will not work because it cannot access files on disk and it needs to okay so once you've put it into a folder like this you can right click on it and if you're on a, a Mac I think it's pretty much the same thing you right click and you open the archive um, in Windows you do an extract tool in Linux there'll be a I think you can double click it and it'll open the up the uh, unarchiver I think on a Mac if you double click it it automatically un uncompresses the zip archive as well um, on Windows I normally do a right click and use the built-in Windows extractor so click extract all and then it gives you the destination which is exactly the same as where you put the zip file so exactly the same place you do the extract and then it will give you a new window in there called production launcher windows and inside of there is the launcher.exe and the launcher.dat and you should have both of those okay so let's just get rid of this window in the background now so now we can see our original video demo folder with the zip file in it then our expanded or unzipped folder called production launcher windows and inside of that is launcher.exe and this is what you need to run the sim now when you download these files you'll find that this launcher for windows.zip is very small it's only 8 megabytes it's not the has uh, nearly three gigabytes that we used to have for Velostrone 111 it's just a little tiny launcher program and its job is to download the rest of the sim which is why it needs read write access to wherever you put it because it's going to try and download and store the files wherever you've unzipped it so you need to have around about 10 gigabytes of storage space wherever you unzip it to because that's how big the sim is now it's about 10 gig it will download 3 gig to begin with because it's compressed and then it will uncompress that and then when the sim is on your disk uncompressed it's going to take up about 10 gigabytes of space so if we go here to the production launcher for windows folder where we unzipped it we now just run the launcher on mac it will be launcher.app on linux it will be launcher underscore x86 or something like that you may have to right click on it on Linux and set the properties for it to be executable so it can be executed uh, on some Linux systems the execute flag is turned off by default for security reasons so on some Linux systems you will have to right click on 
the x underscore x86 file and make it executable so it can be run by double clicking on it so once you've done that you can double click here and this will basically run the launcher the first thing it does is download the latest version of the launcher which is about 22 23 meg as you can see here so it will download that for me and then install it which is now done and you can see in the background there it's writing files to disk which is why you see here it's produced a patcher here and it's writing files to disk and that's because it actually does need to do that and now it's downloading the sim from our high-speed servers and you can see here the megabytes whizzing away we're on super fast servers so as long as you've got a fast connection you should be able to download at the sort of speeds it's going here it's going at 17 megabytes a second or megabits a second so I've already got 400 odd meg down from our servers I'm not going to wait for this to complete because there's no point because after it's done this it's then going to unarchive it and then install it and this video will get quite long because it takes about on a fast machine on a, about 12 minutes I suppose to do all of to do the download and then the unarchive and and then prepare all of your files something like that so I'm not going to wait around for that I'm going to go straight to let's assume that that has finished so I'm just going to cancel and you can see here if you do cancel then you, you you still have an install button here so you can still open the launcher and click install and it will install it you obviously can't play it because it hasn't installed it yet so let's just get rid of that and get rid of that and now I'm going to bring this window out because this window is where I have already run all of that stuff and it's finished the install okay so if I run this one it'll initialize bring up the patch system and now you can see that there is an active play button and there is a check for updates so you can check it does actually automatically check every time you start the sim so you shouldn't ever really need to press this button because it will do it for you and you can also access a change log for latest changes and you can see here at the moment this just says initial release candidate upload because this is currently a release candidate to go back don't click over here to close this window click this little thing here and it will take you back to here and then to play the sim you just click the play button and then it will open up and there we go and now we're in the sim and that's pretty much it. That's how you set up and install the new version of the Lost Drone. Let's just quit out of that so you can hear me talking. So that's how you install it. It's very, very straightforward. It does most of the work for you. The only bit that you can get wrong, it really is the unzip of the little launcher program, which is down to you guys to do. And hopefully this video shows you exactly how to do it. Once you've installed this latest release of the lost drone if you've got a previous version 111 release it's unlikely it will work anymore because this release will copy out the new version will copy over the databases so it will probably break the old version 111 um, if you've got your version 111 folders on disk i would just delete them because you won't need them anymore and you can get 10 gig of space back by doing so so you don't really want to keep that version 111 hanging around we will keep version 111 available on our website for those people who, for whatever reason, have some issue uh, and are, or are unable to run version 112 for some bizarre reason. Uh, we've not had anyone in the beta group not be able to run version 112, so I'm, I'm not expecting any issues. But we do occasionally have one or two people who have a problem with upgrading, and so the 111 releases will still be available via our servers if you want to run that particular release okay that's it that's pretty much everything you need to know about installing version 112 and i'll see you on the next video